Hello there. I'm Obi Wan. In this video, we're going to continue the how to make a demo series. This is episode four, and we're going to be looking at the base programming. In episode one of the series, we set up Moto Base 2 from IK Multimedia. If you follow that guide, you should have working sound here. We're just going to go with the standard base. My goal at this point is to get the programming done as soon as possible, just to kind of get a feel for the song to see where I can take it. We're going to look at each section and program the bass together. Let's get started. Let's begin with the intro. This is what the intro riff sounds like. I'm going to take MIDI, expand it to 10 bars. I usually do my programming in the piano roll. Sometimes I pull up my MIDI keyboard. For this, I'm just going to use the piano roll. So this song is in drop D. I actually was playing around with the song before this in preparation. And I have my guitar tuned down half step down, so it would be a drop C sharp. And I actually thought it sounded better than drop D. So I may change that when I do the final recording. But for this stage, I'm just going to program in drop D. Start with a G sharp note. Going to lower oh, has some automation on. There we go. So I was trying to program here on the C1 range and it wouldn't let me. So I open Moto Bass and you go to string and it's set up for a four string bass. It's gonna change it to a five string and then now it gives you access to this D note. So let's continue. Sometimes I will use the grid, the guitars up here to kind of know where I'm at on the in time. So I can see the blobs here. So it's going to be G sharp. Then it's going to be G. Okay, to the end. That's too much. You gotta have a pause right here. It's too long. That's it. And then we're just going to repeat this. This one's gonna be a D, a G. This one is a little longer. And 
this was going to be an F. That's it. Then we'll do some open Ds. I'm just get, basically going to line it up with the guitars up here. Gotta be careful with this one because the timing is it's a little weird on these. It's like a you can tell on this one is a little on the second G. This note is longer than this one. And sometimes I do that by accident because I don't play in time, but I think this riff is just kinda weird like that. That's the that's the bar. I don't like this right here. Should be a pause right here. I'm going to repeat that. I don't like how that transition. So that's the that's the intro riff. Let's just turn everything up and just kind of get the vibe now. That's cool. Once I get the guitars tight to the bass and the drums, it's gonna sound pretty cool. The next section sounds like this. Make another blob here. In this section, it goes to an eight note. Yep. So I'm thinking, let me hear the part. So I'm just going to try to follow the kick drum with this one. Change to eight notes. Sorry, sixteenths. C note and then two back to an F. So 
we've got to change it here. Here at the end, let me turn the guitar up a little more. At the end, it just does that turn around. With, uh, so For this part, I have to remember how to play this. So this is a G. So what I did before I started this video, it's I picked up my guitar and I figure out all the notes and I wrote them down on a piece of paper. And it just makes this process a lot easier and going smoother when I have like a map on paper. It's just my process what works for me. Then we go to a G note. It's a high one. This one is a D sharp. Then it repeats. the whole thing. The next section is the chugs. So let's see. Let's check out that part. So on this one, I'm just going to follow the kick pattern. So to speed that up, what I like to do sometimes, let's go to that section. I will copy kicks. Since I already have the pattern made. And I'm going to copy that to here on a new blob. Put it on the D notes. There we go. Then 
here it goes to a D sharp. And then back to the D here. And moving along, we have this section. It's the same section back here. So pretty easy copy paste. This section, this part repeats. But it has a turnaround here. So let me see. Some. Let's fill that in. Triplet here. There we go. And then we're going to repeat that. Oh, I repeat the whole thing. And for the next section, we get the melodic part, goes like this. This one. Let me just see what it sounds like copying the kit pattern. We get the accents. To match the kick and then see how that sounds. This one is in D. The length function. actually work. I might just roll with that. Just gonna repeat it.
And then we go back to the main riff. Just this better. So now we have program bass, program drums, and scratch guitars. So this is a good example of kind of like the speed that I move when making these. The key for me is writing the notes down on paper. That way when I get to this part, it goes so much smoother for me. Let's do a recap of where we're at in the song. I'm just going to play the whole track and, and then see where we are, get a good feel for it. Here we go. Awesome. Really liked how this is coming along. I like this part when we when I add the bass because uh, it's starting to feel like a complete song. And it's what glues the drums and the guitars together. And now I have uh, drums and bass that are in time and basically a backing track that I can use to record the real guitars. I hope this video is useful. Just showing my process of MIDI programming for bass. A lot of it is trial and error. If this was useful for you, please don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. On the next episode, we're going to be tracking the real guitars and come up with a solo. Again, I'm Obi-Wan and see you on the next one. <laughs>